What's up, everybody? This is Cortland from NDHackers.com, and you're watching Andy Hackers Office Hours. On this show, I talk to Andy Hackers just like yourself and match you up with an expert who is going to help you solve various problems and challenges that you're dealing with on a day to day basis. So today, we are lucky enough to have Laura Lopak. Am I saying that right? Lopak? It's actually low pitch. It, like, low pitch. Is that a high pitch? Low pitch, yeah. Oh, that's great. Laura Low Pitch, email conversion copywriter. She's also a strategist for B2B and SaaS companies and startups. So our first guest is going to be Duncan Hemra. Um, hopefully I'm saying your last name, last name right too, Duncan. How's it going? Let us know what you're working on and got it. how Laura can help you. All right. Thank you. So yeah, my name is Duncan Hammer. I am the co-founder at MemberStack. So I guess a little uh, quick backstory on MemberStack. Uh, we help web designers build membership sites using web design tools like Webflow, Squarespace, um, so like prior to member stack, what that looked like is a client would come to a designer and say, I want a membership site in Webflow. And the designer would just have to say like, no, it can't be done. Webflow doesn't have that feature set. So now that member stack exists, they're able to get those additional clients. So that's like between one and a hundred thousand dollars per, uh, per person who comes to them. So there's a huge need. People have wanted it. And we've been lucky to this point that Webflow, I don't know if you're familiar with it. They have a really big community, big active community of web designers. So they've helped us to kind of like share it organically and spread the word, but we want to expand outside of Webflow and we want to reach more people at Webflow and cold email seems like a good way to do that. But we are total newbies. We have uh, no idea and our biggest fear is coming across as spammy just because we're not familiar with like best practices and ways to do it. Um, so I have a list of questions. I guess, should I just start going into them or is there yeah. anything you want to say first? <laughs> no, it sounds really cool. First of all, um, mm -hmm. I remember your, your posts, right? Oh, cool. um, mm -hmm. All your questions. And you said something like designers are my people. Are you a designer too? Yes. So this okay. is actually a problem that I had. Okay. Um, and my best friend and co-founder was like, oh, hey, I can solve that. <laughs> so, so we built out a web app that other designers could do it too. Okay, cool. Yeah, just mm -hmm. start out your questions. Let's go. Yeah. Okay. So I think the first one is in your experience, like, does this seem like a good thing for us to be investing in heavily? Like actually doing a lot of cold emailing when we're a small team. So two people, um, I do full-time design, right? He's full-time development. We don't have a lot of spare time. Uh, does this seem like a good, like a wise investment for us? I think um, that's a really good question. Like, mm -hmm. and cold emailing, sorry about the voice. I've, I've had a cold for the past like week and I can't oh, kick it. Um, sorry to hear that. <laughs> so I'm going to sound like, Batman on this call. <laughs> um, so basically cold emailing at the start is going to take a lot of time. And in the beginning, I would recommend like doing like little bits when you can don't expect to like, to like go from zero to like 60 right away with cold emailing because it won't work. Um, it's, it's a, it's a system that requires a lot of testing. So if you want to do cold emailing, start small, start with like a weekly commitment. Like I commit to sending 10 cold emails this week because if you are sending a good cold email, you won't be able to on the company side, like keep up with a lot of growth all of a sudden, if your cold emails do connect really well. Yeah. And on the time side of things like you sending out cold emails, you won't be able to keep up with the time investment if you're sending like a hundred cold emails a week, because really what you want to do with your cold emails is to make it as relevant as possible um, to your reader. So you, everyone's got this question in their head, which is what's in it for me mm -hmm. and to help your cold email reader convert, you know, sign up with you. You have to answer that question in their head, which means, you have to really, really know the person that you're emailing. And because you already are a designer and you know these people, it, that process might come quicker for you. But usually that looks like a lot of like research, um, which is why I say it can be a bit of like a time suck in the beginning because you're still like figuring out like, who is this person that I'm emailing? What do they care about? How do I solve their problem? And how do I pitch my, you know, us to them in a way that's not salesy with mm -hmm. me so far? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does that answer your question? It does. It actually answers like three of my questions. Uh, so, cool. Awesome. 
and there's a, there, a shift just like took place in my mind where I was thinking about cold emailing, like kind of assuming it was this thing like we would do, right, invest in upfront. But the goal of that is to start a conversation, which is going to take a lot more time. Exactly. So I, I wasn't thinking of it in that way. So, um, and another question I had was like, we tend to start and then burn out, um, which you addressed, like start more slowly, get the conversations, um, and then scale up from that. You don't really need more motivation for that. <laughs> no, no, you can like, and see it as like a process. Like you're mm -hmm. getting to know your, your recipients, like these people that you want to work with. It's almost like the first date. Okay. Like <laughs> you're like exchanging information. Like I like dogs. Oh, Hey, you like dogs too. Oh, I like to read. Mm -hmm. Oh, you don't really like to read. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe we're not a good fit, but like, it's just like, it's just a relationship. The cold e email is just the first start. It's just, think of it like walking up to someone at the bar and being like, hey, can I buy you a drink? That's your cold email. It's not, hey, let's like go around the corner and get married at the wedding chapel. <laughs> that's like, whoa, 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 that's too much. It's not like that at all, okay? That is a great metaphor. Okay, <laughs> that makes sense, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So another question would be like, where do you go for inspiration when you start? It's like at the beginning, the research phase. Okay, so like getting to know who I'm emailing? Or maybe, maybe after that. So you know who they are, you're like starting to actually write the email itself. Do you go for, look for inspiration or do you start just like from the research? I guess that's kind of the same thing, but. <laughs> it, it depends on like if I'm feeling a pretty good connection with the person that I've researched. Mm -hmm. And if I, if I feel like sometimes the email will start writing itself in my head Mm -hmm. um, because of the research that I did, like, oh, hey, like, I feel like I kind of know this person. Like, you know, I wrote an email once to a company in Washington, D.C., and my brother lived there at the time. And so I felt like, oh, we've got this connection. So the writing came easy. Mm -hmm. So if you feel like that, just, just write, like, trust your gut and write the email, even though it might feel like this is kind of weird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's okay. Um, because then you'll be coming off as friendly and you'll be coming off as more you, which is perfect in a cold email because you want it to be friendly. But if you don't have that, like that little flash of inspiration, then go to your inbox and look at, I'm sure you've gotten cold emails and I'm mm -hmm. sure you've gotten sales emails, right? Mm -hmm. From companies, go into your inbox and look at those, those emails that you've gotten either the cold emails or the sales emails and see which ones you remember and see which ones you actually clicked on mm -hmm. and then see if you can like use some of the techniques that they've used in those emails and just like borrow them and put them in your email. Like, Oh, I really like, you know, this section about, um, click here, like the call to action, like, Oh yeah, I really did want to click. So if you can borrow that and put it in your email, make sense. It does. Yes. Thank you. And then going forward, like I've actually got like folders in my Gmail where I've sorted the emails that I've gotten, like cold emails. And then when I go in, if I need inspiration, I'll see which ones I've replied to and which ones I haven't, which are good indicators of which ones are good ones or right. bad ones, right? Mm -hmm. So going forward, you can start like kind of forming those files so that when you do get stuck or when you do need help, you can go in and kind of look at those and see what strikes your fancy. Nice, okay. Yeah. How are we on time? Do I have more questions? Can I? I, I wasn't keeping track of time, so I don't know. We can't hear you, Cortland. Uh-oh. We'll hear it. I guess while he's figuring that out, he okay. can cut me off. If he, oh, he's back, he's back, okay, cool. Okay, sorry, um, I was gonna say, yeah, we're good on time. I'll let you know whenever you're uh, about to run okay, out. Okay, perfect, thank you. Um, so do you recommend any tools um, for, for cold emailing? Yes, okay, so check out crystalnose.com. It's um, this really cool, I think it's AI. I know it's built on this really cool algorithm that tells you their best guess at someone's personality and then gives you hints hmm. on how to communicate with that person based okay. on their personality. Like direct, like say this, say this, approach the conversation this way. And it will tell you for like emails or phone calls or 
whatever. So you kind of get an insight. Mm -hmm. um, use that. I would also use um, Streak, CRM, okay. or some sort of tracking software inside of your Gmail. You can also use like MixMax. Boomerang does it too. Mm -hmm. But you want to see who's opening your emails and who's not opening your emails. Okay. Because then you know if your subject line is doing its job, which is to get your person to, e to open your email, mm -hmm. or if it's not doing its job. And then you can also like just turn on tracking for all your emails and then you'll start getting a good sense too of what subject lines are working like outside of cold emails and what ones aren't, which will give you a better understanding um, when it comes to writing the subject line for your cold emails, what's working and what's not working. Um, Sweet. Okay. Use the uh, CRM feature inside of streak. It's free. So it's okay. really easy. Um, but to keep track of the leads that you're contacting and when you have to follow up next with them, that will make your life a lot easier than like tons of post-it notes on the wall. Those so are the another, basics. Yeah. Okay. Sweet. And you answered another like two questions in that one. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, automation. Yeah. Right? It's like, I feel like the, the dream, right, is to have all this automated templates, all that stuff, but it's sounding more and more like that's really not the way to go, um, at least not to start, right, because it right. should feel natural, should be fun, which is like not computers, or not uh, automation, right, um, make it human. Um, but do you think there's a place for automation in this? Yes, I do think that there is a place for automation, and I, and I think that you're right. I think it comes like lots further down the line than mm -hmm. at the beginning start. Yeah. Um, because at the beginning, you're going to be making like hypotheses about your cold email reader, like what they like, what they don't like, how you tie into their goals, um, those kinds of things. And so you want to be able to switch things easily in the beginning. You want it to be a little bit fluid, right? But once you've figured it out, once you've figured out who you're emailing and what they respond to, then you can start to like make a template. And then that's when automation comes into play. Um, and you can use like canned responses within Gmail again. Um, I think Streak does this too. It's called Streak Snippets, where you basically have got your cold email template. You hit a button. You just have to populate a couple of fields. Or you can go like with the software, the big boys, like reply.io does this kind of thing. Mailshake does this also. Um, I think prospect.io does it as well. And then you're, you're talking like big, big campaigns, lots of people, that kind of thing. Awesome. Okay, cool. Um, <laughs> that's all my questions. Awesome. Knocked them all out. Mm, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for asking. Mm -hmm. Duncan, out of curiosity, what's your, what's your plan for uh, going about all these cold emails? Ah, yes. So it's going to change a lot after this conversation. Uh, I haven't taken any notes, so I'm going to go back and watch it uh, with my uh, co-founder and come up with like a concrete plan. But it's going to be, uh, there's a list of people in the community who aren't active, um, who aren't very active, but they put out a lot of projects that people like look up to and respect. I mean, I have, we haven't heard from them yet. So I want to try to reach out to them uh, to their, someone on their team, a lot of them are agencies. So I'll try to start reaching out to people on their teams um, mm -hmm. and see if there's something, some value <laughs> we can provide to get a conversation going. Cause I know okay. they're losing clients. Like I know they're losing clients. So it's just a matter of yeah, letting them know they don't have to <laughs> anymore yeah. and not turning them off. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. It's sort of been helpful to, uh, to talk to you, Laura, beforehand. Cause I, when I started any hackers, it's something like 150 cold emails. But it wasn't for, it was like, it wasn't selling anybody anything. It was just like getting them to agree to do an interview. But still, the vast majority said no. It was like, I had like a 10% yes rate. Uh, so I would have, could have used some tips. But anyway, thanks so much, Duncan. Uh, good luck. And let us know on the Indie Hackers forums how it goes if you end up following some of this advice. Um, people would love to read a post about it from you. Fantastic. Will do. And I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, nice to meet so, you. You too, Duncan. Thanks. Mark has been silent in the chat see if he's actually here. Uh, Mark, I'm going to make you into a, what does Zoom call it, a panelist? Mark, can you hear us? Are you there at all? If he's not, we're going to go to Luca. So Luca, I'm going to promote you as well.
All right, Mark, I can't hear you, but we'll see if I can hear Luca. Luca, are you there? Can you hear me, guys? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, I can't see you. I, I just see your name. You. Here can we you go. Me? Yes, yes. Okay, so, cool. Thank you so much for inviting me. So excited. And um, so my, my question about it were like, my, my goal with cold reach email is reaching people and software as a services that can be in our target, okay? So we sell um, a customer support uh, suite and what we can do is targeting people interested in this kind of uh, software. So I know that maybe some of them are using our competitors. How can I reach them in order to let them switch to our software? And um, so how can I select the right person inside the, that company in order to reach them and have a successful uh, cold reach uh, campaign? And should be personal or should, uh, should be a business email? Uh, so I sh should send them via my personal email or my company personal email? Okay, okay, good question. So we'll start with the, the personal or business email. I would say if you are gonna be, con like if you wanna have a relationship, a business relationship with them, contact mm -hmm. on the business email, not the personal, cause that would be a little, it would like muddy the waters a little bit. It yeah. wouldn't give them a clear idea of like what you're about. And then they might start wondering maybe his business is not legit cause he's emailing me from personal, like, and that would create a lot of doubt and untrustworthiness basically in your reader's mind, which is it's exactly what you don't want. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. So email them from your business email. And then as for the person who you want to email, at the company, mm -hmm. do you already have clients who are like the people that you want to reach out yes. to? Yes, okay. of course. So basically, sometimes the requests come from the CEO, or maybe sometimes for from the the guy, or even sometimes from the tech guy. So it really depends who actually recognize the product, who discover the product. And then who is in charge of having that kind of decision. But from the outside, how can I understand he's the best person to reach and what's the lead to go for? Right. Okay. So can you, maybe you don't know the answer to this question, but I'll ask it just to see, because I mm -hmm. don't know. Okay. Um, can you tell from the people who are contacting you, like the people, the tech people, Mm -hmm. Are they from a different size company than from the ones the CEO, like you're connecting with as a CEO? Yes, yes, of course. Different so, sizes? Yeah, yeah. It really depends on the size of the company, of course. Okay. Okay, so that's how you're going to know um, going forward, like who you should contact at the company. Like if it's, if it's a company size of like... Enterprise, kind of. Okay. Yeah. Yeah whatever it is the tech guy is contacting you from, like maybe, is that a bigger company? Mm -hmm. Like over a hundred people, 500 yeah, people? Yeah, yeah, Okay. Yeah. And then when the CEO is contacting you, I bet it's a smaller company? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. correct, exactly. Okay. So, okay. Sometimes happen that even, you know, for the little bit, like 50 more employees, I've been contacted from the CEO as well. So okay. that's why I'm asking you, should I contact, uh, I, I, I don't know who actually is in charge to, to decide that things as right. a very first contact. So who should, who should I uh, go for when I need to, you know, leverage on the, the, the benefits I'm going to bring them? Right. Okay. So in a situation like that where you don't know, always aim for the top because mm -hmm. if you send an email to the CEO and he's like, oh, this guy down here, John, he's the one who actually handles it. And, and we do need this. He's going to forward your email to John. And Got that it. gives you an instant credibility boost because all of a sudden, John's boss is telling him he has to contact you, okay. which means your chances for a reply have suddenly gone way up. Great. Because 
it's his job to contact you. So mm -hmm. in those situations, like aim for the top, um, make sure that you've written the best cold email that you possibly can, like before reaching out to like those, the CEOs and stuff, see if you can like, have you sent cold emails before? Do you know that your cold email is working? Uh, yeah, we did start a little okay. bit time ago. Didn't have that much conversion from them, but yes, yeah, some, sometimes it worked, but it was more a connection, a personal connection actually. So the other question was, should I automate them once I have the lead or do you just do personal cold email reach? What do you mean by automate? Like, do you have, I don't know, hundreds uh, emails that you know you can, you can work with and do you send them automated email like a funnel or do you do just one by one cold email? Oh, like do follow-ups? Is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah, correct. Okay, okay. So yeah, you definitely do need to follow up. Um, following up is, is going to be your secret sauce for winning the game because okay. a lot of people will send one email. Mm -hmm. And if you just send one and never follow up, it doesn't help your recipient prioritize your email. So yes. in other words, you're, you're saying, oh, it was just like a fluke. I just sent this email and, uh -huh. and like, uh -huh. it's not important to me to follow up. So it's not important for you to reply. Got it. But if and you follow up, that will help a lot. How often, thank you so much. So yeah. how often do you contact them and till when? Okay. Yeah. That's the question <laughs> I hear a lot, right? Um, so in the beginning, follow up pretty quickly, like, two business days after your first email is your first follow-up mm -hmm. after your first follow-up let like three business days go by because mm -hmm. you don't want to come on too like hot and heavy like oh my gosh yeah. you want to like respect the fact that they've got other things going on mm -hmm. and they might have seen your email install mm -hmm. that tracking software mm -hmm. to see if they've opened or not mm -hmm. um but you you want to keep in mind like what might be going on in their life and kind of gradually increase the time in between each follow-up mm -hmm. um, and you and keep it all in one thread so they don't have to like go back in their inbox mm -hmm. and look for the first one which they won't <laughs> yeah of course not yeah. they won't <laughs> okay i actually got a cold email from someone who like sent me each email in a new email and i was like i don't even know who you are anymore like yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, totally. So, yeah, keep it. And then as to the question, like, when do you stop? That, that's a, de it's a depends. Um, mm -hmm. It depends on whether or not they've been opening your emails. Mm -hmm. It depends on how often they've been opening. Mm -hmm. If they've opened like one and you've sent them like 10 total, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe it's time to like, yeah. okay, it's not a good, a good fit, right? Like mm -hmm. let them get cold again maybe revisit in six to nine months. Okay, 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 yeah. thanks. Um, just last question, what kind of software do you use to, to track or send your emails? Yeah, good question. So I use, I use Streak CRM for Gmail. Um, Cause Streak? it has, yep, Streak. Mm -hmm. And okay. it, it has that tracking ability so you can see the opens and everything. Okay. And then it has like this, the built-in CRM function within mm -hmm. your Gmail. Um, so when you're first getting started, this is a good way to keep track of like who you've contacted, when you contacted them. It'll remind you when to follow up. You can oh. move them through the progression. It gives you like stages. Lovely. So it keeps you organized and you don't have to like go crazy keeping track of the details. Okay, you got it. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just last question. Do you have kind of a template we can use to, um, to create our own uh, model uh, within this CRM? Yes. Yes, I do. Um, if you go to my website, lauralopich.com, just my name, you'll see that there is, um, it should be like right below the header on the website. You can get my, my two templates for free. Oh, I registered them actually. Did uh, you but just get I those? No, I didn't get it because okay. I think uh, some of them 
went to the spam folder, so oh, I, I didn't get the, the, the actual uh, thing. So I, I'll try again with another email to see if it's going to work. Okay. Okay, uh, cool. Good to know. So uh, I think that's it. Thank you so much for your answer. Much, much appreciated. And uh, thank you for your time, of course. You're welcome. Thank you, Luca. Thanks. Thank you much, Kamran, Luca. Thanks, guys. Looks like Mark is back. So I'm going to try Great. adding him second time. Mark, when you get on here, just introduce yourself and let Laura know how she can help you. All right, you're muted, Mark, but I see you. There you go. Okay. Hey, how are you doing? Hey, Mark. Oh, wow, second person who's outside. <laughs> it's never happened to today. Twice. It looks like it. Okay. So, um, yeah, my name is Mark Halpin. I am a freelance software developer. Um, basically, questions that I have for you revolve around, you know, lead generation, getting new clients, and specifically, you know, for you through the channel of cold emails. Um, and thank you for uh, having me here. Yeah, definitely. Happy to help. So, what's your first question? So, um, I guess the first question, and this is probably just a more generic question, is, you know, how do you, if you're starting from scratch, um, generically speaking, you know, where would be a good place to, to find those contacts in your, your target market? Um, you know, if I'm targeting real estate agents or lawyers or whomever it is, you know, where would be a good place to start to, to get those contacts uh, from, a, from a broad approach? Okay, so try LinkedIn, because you'll be able to sort by um, job title. And so if you're looking for people specific in, um, with a specific job title, you'll be able to sort, and then you'll also be able to to, um, extract like the email addresses out of that search. There's a lot of information outline online on how to do this. So I won't go into like the tech, the tech side of it, but, um, it'll give you a good starting point and help you figure out like who, who you're looking for. And then from there, you, there's a lot of different places like the best advice I have is go to where those people are already hanging out. So for me, like the perfect example is actually this office um, hour. Like I work with SaaS companies and I work with B2B companies. That's why I'm here because that's what you guys are. So that's how I can best connect with you guys. So think of it in terms of that, like where are those people already hanging out? Maybe there's a Facebook group out there that is, for those people. Maybe there's a Slack channel out there that's for those people. See if you can, if you can ferret around and nose around and see where they already are hanging out. Makes sense? Yeah, that's a, that's a good starting point. Um, so to build on that, my next question is, you know, once you actually have that list, um, you know, for my last email campaign, I've noticed it's about a 12% response rate. Okay. You know, where does that stand in terms of, you know, industry, you know, standards uh, or, you know, is there more that can be done to, to get that? Okay. Were those all positive responses or were they kind of a mixed bag? Uh, most of the, most of the responses, um, you know, there were some responses that were just I'm not interested and some of them were like, Hey, I'm interested, but I don't have the time or the money or, or it, more, more of a mixed bag. Okay. So really anything like above a 9% positive response rate is really good. Um, but you should also look at the, like the fact that you're getting a mixed bag means that your cold email is already on the right path. So you've already, instead of like, think of like creating a cold email is kind of like a journey. Um, and you've already like skipped ahead. You're already like kind of towards the middle of the journey because you've already figured out something, something in your email is resonating with your reader. So now your job is to figure out what's resonating. Um, so to do that, you're gonna need to test like elements of your email against each other. Just change one thing like A-B testing. Um, change one thing in this email, keep it the same in this email. Send it out to like a small group of people like 
10 people max and see if anything changes and then do like another test and see you because you want to hone in on some people are responding so look at those emails that the people responded positively to and then see if there's anything different between them and the people who are like not interested and see if you can like isolate what it is that's making someone say yes versus no maybe there's nothing maybe it's just timing but you 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 can't really know at this point okay and i think for my line of business because it's more um services or consulting based you know do you have any any tips or um perhaps any suggestions on, on how to write that email and target that that client that's looking for those services because I think for me it's hard to get across the fact that I am developing software rather than selling a product or a subscription based model um, you know so how would you suggest getting that across in a cold email to somebody who's never heard of me but you know might be interested in in what I have to do okay okay so are there a couple things I'm wondering if there's any like symptoms um, to, to show you like sign pass to show you if a company is in the right stage of growth that they're going to be looking for you. Is there anything like that? Um, I would say that my target market's probably 25 to 50 employees at the moment. Okay. And a lot of people have, you know, three to five pieces of software that they use that, that don't interface with one another. And so I'd come into that scenario and, and, and create like one piece of software that, you know, makes a CRM talk to email, make it talk to, you know, their accounting software, make it talk to, you know, sales funnel, that type of thing. Um, so it's, it's a needed solution. Um, but I don't think that a lot of people know that it can be done or, um, you know, who to go for. Okay. To make that solution. Okay. And can you tell me in terms of like, how it benefits them like how does having those all that software talk together does that save them so many hours a week like how does it how does it make their life easier yeah i would say you know definitely a, a time savings you know i'm sure for you you probably use a crm and you might have intuit you know quickbooks online and you might use gmail and sometimes they don't all mesh together you can't can't get the QuickBooks information into your CRM or vice versa. So that's, that's kind of where the selling point is, is, you know, how can I take all of these disparate systems, make them talk to each other. Um, and ultimately, yeah, that saves time and, and further down the line money because you don't manually type in every field and customize every email and um, you just automate it. Okay. Okay, cool. So here's what I would do, which is talk to some of your current clients and just ask them, um, what's like the biggest, the biggest benefit you've seen in working with me? Um, you can do it like via a survey. You could even, the best way is to get on like a customer interview call where it's you and them and you're asking them questions. Um, but you want to figure out what it is that you're, how you're, how you're helping them, but you want to hear it in their own words because then you can use that language that they've given you in that interview and put it into your email to help attract more people like them. Um, and then it will also help you understand how your clients see and help you like put words and language around how you help them. Cause to me in my head, I'm like, Oh, you kind of do what Zapier does, but I don't know if the people at your companies, that you're targeting will make that connection if you even reference Zapier. I don't know that. But if you do a couple of client interviews, you'll figure out like, yes, they do know Zapier. No, they don't know Zapier. Like, and if you can use that language and also how you, how your clients are seeing your service and how you're benefiting them. Make sense? Yeah. And, and that's, that's a, a big, um, software package that a lot of people have brought up is, oh, well, I use Zapier, but you know, it's limited, you know, for my budget and I don't actually own it. So there's very little to customize. And, um, you know, so that's, that's where I come in and make that custom solution that they own. Um, they can change down the road. Um, 
but yeah, so that's, that's great advice. Yeah, definitely use that customer uh, voice of customer data when you can, because it will make the writing of the cold email so much easier. So if you do do customer interviews and I encourage you to um, just use a lot of like do at least five of them and then look for themes across all of them and see what you can use in that language to put into your cold email. And pretty soon your cold email will just write itself. It's pretty amazing. Okay. And then I guess the last question is, um, do you have any um, like third party or external books or sites that you can recommend to maybe help improve copywriting to maybe get that response rate that you're looking for? And, or maybe any tips to maybe time box the email or something that, that maybe increases the response rate? Yeah. So for general copywriting, I always use copy hackers. They are the creme de la creme, like they are top notch and they'll break it down because copywriting is like a science and an art and they'll, they'll break it down for you with like examples and everything like that on what to do. As for um, <clears throat> cold emails, I wish I could tell you like, oh, look at this person, look at that person. But I, I see a lot of people doing cold emails the wrong way. Um, so I would say get on my email list because I'm doing it the right way. Um, I'll teach you how to do it. Um, but I would say be a little wary of all the free advice out there for the cold emails because some of the people um, are a little bit more spammy than others, <laughs> to put it nicely. Yeah, good question. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right. Thanks, Mark. Well, that is everybody. We got through three people. Um, 40 minutes in. Laura, thanks yeah. so much for coming on. Thanks for having me. It was so much fun. Yeah. Can you tell viewers where they can go to find out more about you and the services that you offer? Yeah, you guys can go to lauralopich.com. It's just my name. Nothing weird or fancy. Um, and I would strongly recommend signing up for my email list because you will get two free cold t uh, email templates when you sign up. But also, I usually dish out the best advice to my email list because, you know, they're my people. So <laughs> if you want the good stuff, that's where you'll get it. All right. Thank you so much, Laura. Thank you, Cartland.